Hey, how's it going guys? This is Carl. I'm here with Andrew Nimi. For a few of you who don't know who it is, he's a vlogger. He makes videos of uh, at the Poker Tales. He has like cool little breakdowns you can see inside his head. And he also travels around places besides Vegas. So, and he also does he has some cool like drone footage, like Casey Neistat style. So, in case you have it, check out his videos. How's it going, man? It's going great. It's, uh, I just got back doing a little traveling. I was in California. Back in Vegas for the weekend, and then uh, back on the road before too long, I assume. Doing a lot of traveling this year? Doing a lot of traveling. Uh, it's always good to get outside of Vegas, I think. It's good to get out of the desert, it's good to go play some games in some other locations. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of, uh, there could be a lot of professionals at the table here in Vegas, so it's good to uh, see what the action is like elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, in America, there's plenty of, plenty of live locations you can check out. How about, have you ever been uh, international? Yeah, I played. Uh, I played in London. Uh, I played some one pound, two pound games at the Hippodrome in London. Uh, those were pretty fun, pretty good. Um, I think that's the only international location that I played. All right. So, like, how did you first get started in poker? Like, what was your backstory? Well, uh, I started as a total fish, as as everyone does. Uh, I was playing just recreationally while I was working. I was living in Los Angeles and had a job working in the music industry and we just kind of played for fun. I was playing online back then. Uh, games were much better, much softer online than they are now. Um, but yeah, I was just kind of playing recreationally after, after work or on the weekends or whatever and uh, was doing so-so for a long time until I kind of just found some forums and read a couple books. you actually like say uh, I want to do this full time or I want to like take the plunge? Is there a certain inflection point? Yeah, I mean it was kind of like uh, I was doing better in poker and the job I was at uh, was kind of slowly ramping down because there were some projects that were supposed to happen at the company I was at but the economy was starting to do somewhat poorly in the US and it was kind of those two things where I was starting to do better at poker and the job was kind of slowing down at the so same time. More appealing, like, getting worse, I'm getting better poker, as well. Yeah, pretty much. And it was kind of just one of those things where I was looking for a change. I was working in the music industry, like I said, and I was starting to get a little bit jaded by that pursuit for various reasons. And yeah, I just started to do better at poker. Uh, there was more time for poker. One thing leads to another, and you end up just doing it full time. It seems awesome. Do you have like a favorite room? I really like the Hustler when I was living in when I was living in Los Angeles. I really like playing the, the the Hustler. I feel like the Hustler is probably at least back then it was probably closest to like the Vegas style yeah, of uh, decor, and uh, just, it was a pretty nice property. The the Commerce uh, probably definitely had the most games, but it was a little bit overwhelming. I felt like the the Hustler was a little bit more uh, just a little bit more chill, a little bit nicer property. Yeah, so, I noticed that too. Like. The bike and commerce, they're, they're like, you know, the go-to spots, but it's pretty much like a warehouse, like a Walmart, just table after table. The customer was definitely like, a lot more like Jenkins. Uh, yeah. Now, now there's a, a couple of really nice new properties down there. You go to like the gardens or the new Hollywood Park Casino. They're both super nice, uh, especially compared to like the commerce that hasn't done too much as far as improvements over the years. Well, I have been to Wine Garden for those 10, so I'll have to check it out. It's, uh, <laughs> it's gone from a 10 to like this. But the game is still a circus. Yeah, the game is still, <laughs> the game is still uh, worth checking out for sure. Alright, so now for, for novice poker players or people that want to get their game, what do you think the top three tips would be? The top three tips? Uh, I mean, I think people underestimate how much studying you should do away from the poker table. Um, and then the obvious question after that would be, well, how do you study? And a lot of people look for books. And I, have, I really haven't read a, uh, a poker book in a while. I'm sure they're out there, but the, the, uh, the thing that I found was valuable was actually networking and meeting other poker players and just talking strategy with them and going over difficult spots or even spots where I thought I was playing correctly. Uh, just bouncing ideas off of them, bouncing hand histories off, off of friends. That really helped me uh, improve a lot. Uh, aside from that, you really need to like rein in your spending. 
that was one of the things that kept me that held me back for a long time. When you think about winning in poker, you think about like winning, you know, like several hundred dollars at a time. And you disregard the losses. You think, well, I can just double up each day. You know, I win like a couple hundred dollars, I win three hundred dollars. Uh, but over the long run, it's not that easy. You have to look at the longer, the bigger picture, and you look at your hourly rate, and then you figure out how much money you're actually making. Um, so, like when you do have a two hundred or three hundred dollar win probably shouldn't go out and spend like you know, half of that on, uh, on drinks and you know doing whatever extra yeah exactly <laughs> um, so yeah you just got to uh, keep keep spending under control um, and then the last thing you just need to be putting in a ton of hours um, that's another thing that I probably didn't do very well for a long time either you need to just be working your ass off if you're playing one two or one three or even two five you need to be putting in a ton of hours, a ton of work, um, to the point of, you don't want to be playing when you're tired and uh, just burnt out, obviously, but you want to be playing pretty much up to that point because life expenses take such a big big portion of your winnings when you're uh, first starting off that um, it's tough to get off that treadmill for uh, those things, so you really need to be grinding it out, putting in a ton of hours, both work, grinding it and studying. That's good advice, good advice. Definitely, I think the, the biggest one is like getting around people that are, are better than you so you can learn from them. Learning people that are like the same level too. Anyone that, uh, and even people that are worse, you should turn yourself of all three, but like, you know, sure. learning from the best, people that are the same level, so you push each other, you're like, do like some prop bets, stuff like that to help you get better. Yeah, I think people underestimate the whole networking thing when it comes to a non traditional job like poker. Like, there's certain things that you still need to do. You still want to like, build a good like social circle and have uh, colleagues, you know, so to speak. Yeah. A lot of people come out here they think they're going to be like flying under the radar just to be like a lone shark, but it's usually going to work out unless you have yeah. support system. Yeah, it's great that you don't have like emails to respond to, things like that piling up. You don't have you don't have uh, company meetings and things, like, things of that nature, but you still want to do some things like networking and uh, yeah, just uh, build that build that circle. You know? Definitely. So, what do you have planned for the rest of the year? You got any uh, big uh, ambitions? Or? Well, the rest of the year is the most of the year. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I guess uh, I'm just be cranking out these the videos for the most part. That's the main focus for me. I just want to keep doing uh, you know fun and interesting things in the videos and just try and uh, keep them as entertaining, enter entertaining, and as informational. Put the straddle on. 